Today we're going to talk about Thomas Hart Benton. He is one of the best known American regionalist artists um, that I think we have here at the McNider Museum. Some of the others, such as um, Grant Wood, you may also be familiar with. A regionalist artist is someone who paints an area of the country, very specifically the rural Midwest area, some portions of the um, Midwest South, and really emphasis on um, the rural area, middle class folks, and um, really not a lot to do with anything that has sort of been industrialized. Thomas Hart Benton was born um, in the 18, uh, 1880s. He was from Missouri, and his family was a very uh, popular political family. When he was uh, younger, he was sent away to a military school, um, sort of as a grooming ground for a later political career. However, his mother realizing really that his true talents and love were in art, he actually applied to, with her encouragement, and went to uh, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. When he went there, uh, learned how to become an artist and really honed his drawing skills. During World War I, he was uh, enlisted as a camouflager, if that makes sense. So what he did was design the patterns and help apply the camouflage to the ships that were coming in and out of the ports on the East Coast. He would also do camouflage reports, meaning that when the ships would come in, he would assess them, uh, do a quick sketch and a drawing to show if any of them had wear and tear, areas that needed to be fixed, and um, really it was one of the areas where he got a lot of extra practice drawing everyday life. He's very famous for, during that time period, doing a lot of sketches of ordinary persons down at the shipyard. And that's really where he started to hone a lot of those skills of drawing just everyday, ordinary persons. After the war, he and his wife lived in New York, and at that time, he really started to rebel against what we would consider the modernists, or the modern art movement. He appreciated a much more um, laid back, uh, traditional approach to art, and with that, those connections to the rural, rural roots, so much so, so that he eventually went back to his home of Missouri. And began teaching as an instructor at the Kansas City Art Institute. And he taught there for the remainder of his life and really um, did a lot of influential work through the WPA and created a lot of really early murals that um, later paved the way for the WPA to um, accept murals and, and pay artists to do murals all over the United States. He had very famous students that later went on to um, be important artists. One of them um, that's probably most famous is Jackson Pollock. And I know today, if we look at Jackson Pollock's work, which is very abstract, it's very different than Thomas Hart Benton. However, Pollock always said that he taught him what it was, what it was he was going to rebel against. You know, taught him critical thinking skills, if you will, to think through the art and the message he wanted to say. We're going to look at this painting uh, quickly um, and kind of do what we call at the museum visual thinking strategies which I want our viewers at home to think about the questions that I'm asking. So here we have a painting, it's called Spring Tryout. When we look at a painting and do the visual thinking strategies, we say, what is going on in the picture? So what do you see going on in the picture? Who is in the picture? What are they doing? Are there any clues to what's going on? What are those clues? And how can we tell things about the painting, such as what time of year it is? Um, what is the artist's intention of the painting? What message does the artist want to tell us? 
So if I didn't tell you that the name of the painting was Spring Tryout, how would we maybe know that it's Spring Tryout? So we know it's a spring month because when you look at the trees, we see blossoms, early fruit blossoms that indicate it's spring. We also don't see a dry, dusty, dirty grass that he represents in the artwork, but instead very lush and happy and um, grass that's just springing up. And one of the most important clues is what's going on in the picture. What's going on in the picture is that this gentleman here riding the horse was able to stay on, on, and this gentleman here was not able to stay on the horse when they got bumped off. And there's an interesting and wonderful story about this piece. So the story of the piece was um, written in a letter to the former director of the McNagher Museum, Dick Leet, and he had written a letter to Thomas R. Benton saying, hey, we just acquired this work of art. We're so happy to have it in our collection. And Thomas R. Benton wrote back to him. It was a few years before Thomas R. Benton did die, but I will go ahead and read the section of the letter that depicts what he was trying to say and depicting in the painting. In a letter dated March 24, 1971, to the Charles H. McNider Museum, Spring Tryout had a story behind it. When I was a little kid in Missouri, my family had an old buggy horse named Rex, a big horse. Rex, as he got old, wasn't used very much and spent most of his time at the pasture. With one of my friends, we set out to ride him, bareback, of course. My friend got on him first and I followed behind. Rex got frisky and suddenly started to run and slid, I slid off over his tail, not expecting this sudden activity. So the horse was a little bit frisky in the springtime weather, probably didn't get used much over the winter, and the rider in the back lost his seat. So the message that he's saying here is a little bit about a memory that he had as a child growing up. This is very, very common of Tom Sarr Benton's work. He very much uh, painted about things that he saw, things that he remembered, and his favorite subjects were uh, the average everyday citizens and average everyday happenings. Not necessarily pictures of in, um, important people, not necessarily pictures of, of important events. Instead, it was very much sort of like his political thought philosophy that he had been uh, trained in as he grew up, which was very much populist in its thinking, meaning that it was very much, you know, more of a middle class and, and rural communities. And this, at this time period when all this was being painted, the world was very much a changing place, especially for the rural areas of the Midwest. And Thomas Hart Benton was sort of um, recounting that and, and painting and documenting that. On Saturday, we will be uploading one of the pictures from our coloring book, and it is Thomas Hart Benton's Spring Tryout. This is part of a coloring book that was made for the museum's 50th anniversary by our staff, and I hope you enjoy coloring in the pages of Thomas Hart Benton's Spring Tryout and making that work of art grow.